Hi, this is LJ Boffel, and this is a second video on formulas, calculations, and functions um, for Excel 2016. So the first video we had on this focused primarily on your uh, mathematical types of functions, adding, subtracting, subtracting, averages, counts, rounds, stuff like that. And um, this week, like last week, the goal of this um, part of the class is not for me to heavily assess whether you can become an expert in using the functions, but rather for you to learn how and then just demonstrate that. So don't stress if the concepts we're getting in here, which will be dealing with a couple of financial functions and some, some statistical functions, seem like something you're not even sure what you would use them for in the future. Just trying to get a feel for what Excel can do for you. Financial functions would be for things like if you're trying to calculate things for cash flow or loans, stuff like that. Statistics would be if you're trying to, for instance, find information in um, a table of information might be actuarial table and return it back um, in, in another table, but you have to go look in the first table to find something out. And then, you know, instead of trying to eyeball it, you use a specific type of function to do that. And um, so we'll take a look at how these things work. So this week, um, I have uh, several links and demo videos related things. There's tons of them down here. Don't freak out at this. You may find you can use all of them. You may find you only want to use a couple of them because you feel the book has given you enough through your work through and such. But I've, I've put a lot of different things down in here so that you can look at several very short um, tutorials and examples of how things um, look and feel for the types of formulas and functions we're doing this week. And then, of course, we still have the how-to page here as well, where I've also listed basically all the different types of links in a slightly different way, um, including the ones we worked on last week for text and mathematical. So hopefully all of this is helpful to you. And also remember that you can go into our discussion forum and uh, check and see if there are other students who'd like to get uh, together to study on this sort of stuff together. Or you could check the other discussion where folks are putting in tips and techniques and things that they learn. And you can add some things in there as well that you think might help someone else out as you're trying to figure out how to process through what you need to do for the formulas. I'm not going to cover every single formula that our book mentions, but I'm going to give you a nice example of several different things in here um, so that you have a good start. And then again, use any of those other links I, I suggest to you. The first one we're going to take a look at is a couple of financial formulas. The first formula is calculating a loan payment. And um, what we're going to do is use a formula called PAM, the payment formula. And essentially that formula is asking you to uh, put in information about the rate, that would be the interest rate, the number of payments that you want to uh, make, um, and then the uh, loan amount, which is the um, present value of the loan amount, and that's here. And the idea here you have to keep in mind is that when you get, say, the question where it says, and the annual interest rate is umpty ump percent, that actually will need, in order for this to meet uh, a number of monthly payments, that annual interest rate will need to be divided by 12. So I've done this. And then um, you may also get in this calculating a loan payment question the number of years you're going to take to pay it off. So it may be a 20-year mortgage. It may be, in this case, for a loan of about $20,000. This could be an education loan or a loan for a car or a boat or for making some upgrades to your home, like adding a new room or refurbishing the kitchen or something like that. So in this case... If you're saying that you're going to pay it in three years, you would actually need to bring this down to monthly as well, because the idea is you're calculating a monthly loan payment. You should probably put that up here, see if that makes a little more sense. So in this case, if you're doing it over three years, that would be 36 months. So how does this formula work? Let's go take a look at the function. I'm going to come over here, formulas, PMT. And I get my lovely little function argument wizard. So the rate isn't going to be 8%. It's going to be 0 0.067 because that's broken down to monthly. The number of payments um, is not the number of years. It's the actual number of payments, which would be 36. 
and then the present value of the loan is $20,000. And this is all I really need to put in here. According to this, that looks interesting. Did I grab? Yeah, I grabbed the uh, payment one. According to this, I'd be paying um, $148 a month for three years in order to pay off this $20,000. So... That looks interesting. Um, yeah. So that's what we get there. I don't know. That doesn't look quite right. I feel like I should be paying. Yeah, I guess that's right. That's a month. Yeah. So <laughs> almost $150 a month. So that would be um, $100, $100 a month would be $1,200. No, that does not look quite right. What is going on with this? So we have 8%, and then this is 8 divided by 8 by 12. That equals that. 3 years, 3 times 12 is 36 months, $20,000. Oh, that's it. Here, see what I did wrong? I put in $2,000. I knew that looked wrong. <laughs> 20000 that's look more what looks like it. So you always have to double check your formulas and what you put in there. I just accidentally left out a zero. Good grief. So anyway, now the reason this is in this particular format is because this is a negative amount. And it's a negative amount because the idea is the amount is being paid from you to the bank. Therefore, it will be a negative amount in your own account going over to the account for paying the loan. So this particular format happens to be one of the ways you can express numbers in a negative format. If I wanted to go to Format Cells and go over to Number, and uh, say in currency, there's different formats here I could use. I could just choose a negative one, two, you know, this example. So I hit OK, and now I've got the negative amount here. And I should make this so that it is, I guess, what, 14 points? So it's about the same size. So that's how you get that. Now, the other one I've got here is calculating an annuity's future value based on its current value, an interest rate per year, and the number of payments, and say the number of payments were going to be 48 payments. You have some extra money that you get every every um, month in your paycheck, and you'd like to put it into an annuity, so that annuity will be there for you in the future to use for maybe traveling abroad or towards your retirement or something like that. And then the amount of payment you want to pay each month, and this isn't a negative amount because this would be taken from your bank account to put over into the annuity account, which means you you would be minus $300 in your personal account. Right now, the per present value I'm leaving to zero. Uh, say I'm just starting the annuity from brand new, and then the payment will be received at the beginning of period or the end of the period. And so let's see how this looks with either one of these. This is what the formula looks like. You're using the future value, and you'll be putting in the rate, the number of payments, the monthly payment, the present value, which is optional, and the type, which is optional. And I'm going to do the type with one and with zero because I want to see how this looks. And the rate, just like for the calculation we did above, is if you're given an annual interest rate, you need to break it down to monthly, assuming you're doing this by month. And if you're going to do this over five years and you wanted to do it monthly, then you would say like five years would be what, 12, 24, 36, 48, 60. This is going to be over the next four years. So it would be a monthly payment of $48. Excuse me, of 48 payments of $300. So let's go in and take a look at this formula. So we're going to go to FV. And we get this. So the rate will be 0 0.05. I will try to be more careful with my numbers here. We do 40 eight payments. I'm putting in negative 300 because that's the money that will disappear from my bank account. The PV I'm, is, is optional. And so, because when it's a bold, when you're using one of these function arguments, and you see things that are bold, these are, are required. And when they're not bold, they're not required. Then I'm going to put in one to be paid at the beginning of the period. And I want to see what will change. What This is, this is we can get a preview here. At the end of four years, after paying this much in with this rate of interest, um, I will have an annuity worth 59 odd thousand dollars. Now, if I were to put in zero, it would be worth 56,000. And that, that has to do with 
um, if everything started being paid on the first of the month or the end of the month, and that just apparently affects the interest, um, how it's calculated just a little bit. I'm going to leave one. Okay, let me go here. So $59,000. Now, what if the present value of the annuity is already a certain amount of money? Well, again, um, you would think, okay, I'm going to put in a, a positive number. Say it's already a $50,000 annuity. Well, the thing is, you have to keep in mind, this is not my money. This is my money in an annuity account. So it's not in my account. So you would put a negative number here too. So now what I can come down here is go in and notice how between these two commas, there's nothing because the present value is um, 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 not accounted for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to click in here. And now here's what would happen. If I started with $50,000 and I put this in, according to this, at the end of four years, I'd have an awful lot of money. But that's because the whole thing would be beginning um, five, excuse me, 6% increase each year. Um, not only the amount that I'm putting in, but the principal. So that's, that's how you get that sort of thing. Now let's go take a look at statistics. And here's just an example of different things you could do with statistics. So I've got a table over here for a region, the salesperson for the region, products that they sell, um, and then um, in that region, the brand, which I don't really seem to need anything about for here, but that's where it is, and then the regular price of the product. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a named range because that can be effective for like when I want to sum things or if I want to look things up in a range instead of having to come in here and manually grab the cells, I'll do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just call this reg price. Reg price. Okay, so that is a named range. And then if I wanted to come down here, um, there's no reason to actually sum this up because this is actually the price of the product. It's not a, um, a, a, a number of sales that all of these people have made. So I'm going to take that out and not worry about it. But what I want to do is come up here and it's like, what we want to do is find out that for salesperson with the name of Lee, how many product sales have they had? per this table. And this table doesn't have any dates in it, but just per this table, maybe this is sales over the last month. I don't know, we could call it the, say, or the, this month or the January 2018 product sales. And so we want to find out in this month or week or year, how many products this person has sold and not what the number uh, or not what, what the total price is put together, what they sold are. But the, um, and I haven't quantities in here, so the assumption is they're selling one of each, I guess, in any given row here. So we have to find this out. And what we need to do, if we want to put this information over here, we have to find a way to tell Excel that the information in here is going to be equals to looking up this table for any salesperson named Lee and counting up that number of mentions, because that would basically be the number of product sales. Um, it's not saying which product sales, it's just saying product sales. So how do we do this? We're going to be using uh, counting the number that that person has mentioned. And we're going to do that same thing for Hazelwood, Bundy, and Nordstrom. So what I'm going to be doing is using a count if function. Now here I've actually got a formula, and I'm not going to go back and forth to the function in every single case because you know, you'll get kind of bored with that. But I, I've got a formula here that's saying count if, and what I want to do is look through B2 through B28, and then um, the per look up the person's name. Well, since I'm going to be looking up salespeople, why don't I come down here and see if I can make it a little easier by saying sales rep. I'll call this sales rep. So what I could do in this formula is I could copy this over here. Equals count if. Now, I don't have a person's name in here yet, so let's let's take a look here. I'm getting count zero. Why am I getting a count zero? That's because right near I put the word name in here just so that I could tell myself what I wanted um, uh, to remember to add to this. So if I'm going to put Lee in here, then what's happening is this is coming over here. It's looking through this column of names and counting the number of times the name Lee shows up. So if I were going to do this, I'm going to copy this formula down. I would now, here's interesting. This is a problem because now it is not looking in the 
correct sales, or it's not looking in the correct range of B2 to B28. So if I want that to happen down here, remember when we looked at last week that you have to make it either an absolute sell range um, or you could create a named range, which is what I did. So what I'm going to do is come over here and say, you know, so you come up to the first formula, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the select these and then press on a PC, my F4 key, and it puts that in. So that's pretty cool. Still the same number of mentions of Lee. I'm going to copy this formula down. But in this case, I'm then going to change the name Lee to Hazelwood. And that works out. Now, another way I could do this, instead of having to type this out like this, what I could do is we'll just copy this formula, paste it down here. That doesn't look quite right. I'm doing something wrong, so I'm going to do this. So remember, when you're going to come in and catch a formula up here, copy it, then you want to X out of it so that you let go of the cell's attempt to calculate something so that you can then move into a new cell. So I'm going to paste here. Now, what I'm going to do is over here, instead of having this typed out, I'm just going to call it sales rep. So it's going to look at that same field. And then I'm going to change the name over here to Bundy. And there we go. And then I could copy this formula down. And it's going to stick with sales reps. See how much easier this is than having to come up here and do this all the time. So you could do it either way. But that's kind of the little the use of named ranges in this sort of format. But in this particular case, I want to make sure that the last name is Nordstrom. So that's the count. Oops, I did something wrong up here. No, oh, that's supposed to be a Lee. And what's going on? Oh, wow, I've really messed up my formula. That's okay. I'm going to come up. <laughs> let's first come down here and let's do Nordstrom. See, it's so easy to actually mess up what you're working on. But that's why you want to build into your formulas as many safety features as you can, like using a named range. So what I'm going to do is I can copy this formula up, and then I can change the name to Lee, and then I'll be okay. So yeah, there we go. That's how I get the count. Now what if I want to do the same thing for the total of um, uh, uh, sales? So I'm going to not only be having to look at the person's name up, but I'm also going to have to look up the number of sales they made. So again, assuming Lee only sold one BMX here and one Sector 9 and one another BMX, but only one of them. You see there's no quantity here. If there was a quantity, I'd have to look for a third column of information or in, in the row that I'm trying to look the information up in. But I'm only going to be looking at this based on Lee's only sold one of this bike and only one of that skateboard and only one of that whatever. So this is the formula for that. It's a sum if, and it's looking for two pieces of criteria. It's going to be looking back over here for the salesperson, but it also wants to be looking up the information in the price. So the great news is I have two separate, I have red price and I have sales rep. I have two separate named ranges that will be perfect for this. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to just for kicks come up to the, sorry, formulas, and I want to use the sum if. And then the range I'm going to want to look up um, to reference, let's verify what I'm doing here and what it means. So what we're going to be doing here is we put in one range to look up. That's the salesperson. The criteria is the name I'd be looking for. And then the second range which isn't required because I could do a sum if for only one range. And if I want to add multiple ranges, I can add others. So the first range I'm going to do, I'm going to do sales rep. And that pulls up results here. So this is indicating, yes, this is already, in fact, a named range. Now I'm going to look up Lee. And then the sum range is I want reg price. So reg price. And see, it's pulling up the whole list of all the prices. And then it's going to pull this number of sum of all of Lee's results in reg price. And they come here. And there it is. Now I can copy this formula down. Be the exact same number, but that's only because I need to change the names in here. 
Oh, did I spell Hazelwood right? Hello? Yes, I did. Now, I've got an error popping up. What's going on here? Inconsistent formula. Well, I did that. Well, okay, so what's happening here is this seems to be confused about me wanting to carry this formula down. If I were to copy the formula from above, it would just put Lee's name in there. So I'm going to say, no, I really want this to be Hazelwood. And it, did I spell Hazelwood wrong? I did. And then I'm going to have this little error. So I'm going to come over here. And in this particular case, even though it says it's an inconsistent formula because I did the build out, it's not going to let me copy it down perfectly. And if I went and chose copy formula for above, then it would copy this with Lee's name in it. I don't need to look up for help. I know what's going on. So I'm going to ignore the error and that will be fine. And then down here, um, I've got the formula again. It's going to be Bundy. And then down, and, and because I went and ignored the error up here, Excel is like, okay, yeah, that's fine. I guess I'll ignore it here too. I mean, I, I'm thinking like the computer program's thinking in that way, but, and then down here would be Nordstrom. There we go. So that's the sums total. Now, what if I want to do the averages total? It would be basically the same information. So what I'm going to do here is just for kicks, because I'm, you know, I like to be efficient or lazy, depending on how you look at it. This is a sum if. What if I were to do this so that I could look it up? Yes, yeah, so I hate when this thing pops up. Yeah, I want to look at average if. So I could actually come here and use the same formula, but instead of putting sum in, I could do average if. And what's going to be the average sale um, is, it's not the sum, it's the average, it's going to be $158. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy these over here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a search and replace, which is a control H on a PC. Or can I do it from over here? Search and replace. I want to see the quickest way to do that for you. Let's see, do we have home here? I don't want to find and select per se. I want to, yeah, okay. Replace. So, so this is actually a sum if, and I want to replace sum if with average if on those three. Replace all. All done. And see, it went and fixed the formulas for me. <laughs> so you learn different ways to, to manipulate and massage the program. So down here, what's this one? What if I just wanted to know the sales of the bike product? I could actually create a whole summary table this way, but if I just wanted to plug in bike, um, this is the, it's another sum if. It's going to go in, but instead of looking at the uh, sales reps or the reg price, it's going to be looking at the product. So why don't I just get smart here, come up and make this a name range of product. Ta-da! Okay, so I would come over here. This is a formula I've already done in the past, but let's rebuild it from scratch. So what I want to do is do an equal sum if, and then we're going to do the parentheses. You always have to open and close them. And what I want to do is I want to look inside of here. And then I want to get the value from over here. So over here, I'm going to look at product. There's the tape of the thing. Then this, and then I want to put in the word bike because that's the criteria, comma. And then I want to look in this name range, which would be reg. Hey, okay. I of course would need a reg price. And then hit enter. No, that doesn't look quite right. Did I miss something? So I've done this, I've done this, and I've done this. According to this, there's no sales on bike. So when something like this goes wrong, I, I wrote this from scratch. What I'm going to do is come up to formulas, do it this way. And you're going to face this too. So you know, it's always good for me to screw something up in here so you can see what you can do. Okay, so I want to do some if. And then once again, we're going to come over here. And then we want the range. And the range will be product. I want to see what pops up. So the products are showing up. Criteria is going to be bike because I want to look up bikes. And then the sum range is going to be reg. What was it, reg price? 
and this is in fact pulling up right price and then it gives me an out, uh, amount. So apparently my formula worked, but I just must have mistyped something. So we hit okay. And that's what I want to see. Now here's the thing. What if I want this to be something else? Say I want to go ahead and I want to look up skateboard. Well, this is going to be looking for bike. And I just did this manually. So I come over here and I do skateboard. There's actually more complicated formulas that would say, hey, I want to look at what's over here and put that over here, but that's more of a nested function. And I will leave that particular one to one of the other videos to show you. But if I actually wanted to use this table, you know, more efficiently, I would say, okay, yeah, look up the product. Then in here, look up the contents. Oh, well, actually, we could do that very easily. So here's what I'm going to do. Instead of typing this in manually, what I want to do is put it based on this, this cell here. So let's come back over here. And I'm going to take the quotes out. And then I'm going to do this. But here's the thing. Because I want to make sure that in case I try to accidentally co uh, copy this formula elsewhere, I want to make sure it's always referring to exactly this cell. So this is the case where I would come up here and definitely make this an absolute reference like this. No, not that. It's the F4. There we go. So now we're looking at skateboard. So now, and it's looking based on what's in here. So now if I were to come in and type bike, see? And then if I were to come over here and say, what else we got? Are there only skateboards and bikes? Well, that's boring. <laughs> okay, but <laughs> so it's, it's, it's real simple. So in this particular case, I basically could change this formula to say, based on the um, cell H15, which would be, uh, this age, this 15, because I'm, I'm typing it in manually because this is, remember, one of those commented out dummy formulas or the inactive formula. So anyway, so that's a little bit about how um, the, the sum, uh, sum if and count if and average if that sort of thing works. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple of different lookup options, or three of them. And one of these will be on your final project. I'll give you a hint. It'll be this one. And there's a really good video in there that will give you more details on the index X match option. But basically the idea here is, what if I want to look up some information over here and put it over here? And in this case, I am doing what's called an, an if function. I'm performing a logical test and returning a value for a true result and putting something in here as a result. So, okay, so in here what I want to do is I want to calculate a reward and then I want to make a comment um, based on the facts and figures here and over here. So what I'm gonna to need to do for this reward is I need to calculate a reward. The reward is gonna be calculated on if this amount in the total is greater than the amount listed for the minimum to get a rewards. And if it's greater than $60,000, then they're going to get a $500 reward. And if it's less than $60,000, they're not going to get a reward. So this one, what I did is I had already written out the formula. It's kind of a, a, a an interesting little thing here. So let's take a look at the if function and see if I can do that nicely for you. I'm going to copy this down here so I can see it better while I'm in the F function or in the function. And I'm going to make this so it's 10 points bold. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, bold. Take off the italics. Okay. So if I'm going to use the inf, uh, if function, I'm going to come over here. And basically we'll say if something is true, do this. Otherwise, don't do this. And so the straight if function is if something is do this, cool. Then the alternative is to do nothing. Um, there's an if this is true, do this or else do that. So that would be an if or. Or you can say if this is true and this is true, then do this. So these are different types of logical functions. And the book will cover some of them in some of those videos as well. But this is just a straight if function. If something's true, do this. Otherwise, the default will be to leave it empty or, uh, you know, is basically if do, do this, else do that, which is to leave it empty in the, the case of this formula. So what I want to do here is like, okay, let's just do it. What I want to do is if this amount is greater than this amount, put this amount here. So I'm going to 
look up if. Okay, so the logical test is this amount greater than, I'm going to say greater than or equal to, so do greater than or equal to this amount. If the value is true, put in 500, and if the value is false, I'm just going to leave it empty. So basically, if true, do this, else do that. That's what an if statement is. Now, I actually did it in the wrong place, so let's try it again. Put it in the right place here. In this case, uh, let's go back up. I'll do if. Okay. If this is greater than equal, it's e greater than and equal to equal. Hello. Make sure I don't have any spaces there. You don't want to have spaces. Greater than equal to this. Then put $500 in this cell, otherwise do nothing. There we go. Now this is something we want to take a very close look at. In this particular formula, if we were to copy this formula down, we want this to be using the relative value for grabbing the total in order to calculate is this amount greater than this or is it less than this. However, what I want to do is, regardless if I copy this formula down to refer to the information that's relative to it, I want it to stick with this absolute value here. So in this formula, this is one of those mixed ones where we're using cell H8, which could be this, then it'll be H9, H10, H11, H12, but we want to make sure that J4 is the only cell that it's being compared to. So in this case, that's where we use the absolute value here, do the F5, oops, what did I do? Wrong, wrong, function key F4. I'm used to using F5 for refreshing websites all the time. So this makes it so that is now a combination of a relative cell reference and an absolute cell reference. So if I copy this down, now interestingly, this is just putting in false because I put nothing in the formula. So what I'm going to do is put zero here. Or no, actually I don't want to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is put quote mark, quote mark like that. Okay, there we go. So here, no, I'm going to miss it. Let's do quote mark because I want it to stay empty. Okay, so I'm going to do this, copy this down, and there we go. So these people will get the $500 and the other two people won't. Now the next thing is, is I wanted to take a look at is if cell H8 um, is greater than $50,000, I want to be able to say outstanding. And if it's below $50,000, I want it to be able to say keep pushing. It's almost like a thumbs up, but keep pushing. So we're going to do another if one here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just go ahead and um, type this myself. If this, what? Okay, fine. I was trying to, if this is greater than equal to 50,000. And in this particular case, I'm not actually re referencing a table. I'm just typing in a number. So, And then what I want to do is say, great work else I wanted to say keep pushing I should put a nice exclamation point here so what we're saying is if the contents of this cell are greater than 50,000 then please put in this cell great work or else put in the cell keep pushing and there we go great work So this is like a practical application to this. So here we go. Now we have great work, great work, keep pushing. Now the neat thing here is what if this person um, ha, uh, managed to say, oh, wait a minute, I actually forgot to put something in here. They're at um, 48,000, so I might bring in, you know, 7,200 there. I might say, oh, no, it's actually supposed to be 9,800 because some new figures came in. Suddenly they would have great work here because they'd be over 50,000, but they're not over 60,000, so this wouldn't change.
So anyway, that's what the if does. Now, what if we want to look something up and put it somewhere else? Well, we're actually doing the same kind of thing. We're doing a VLOOKUP, but in this case, we're doing something a little bit more um, complex. Okay, so here, what I want to do next is a VLOOKUP function. And here's the goal. I want to put a commission in here. And what I need to do is calculate this times a commission percentage based on where this total falls in this table. So this is a little more complex than what we did up there. So we're doing a VLOOKUP. Now VLOOKUP is based on looking things up in rows and, and, and such. And a HLOOKUP does the same thing, but it looks it up more in columns. And um, it's not used as often. So I'm just going to show the VLOOKUP, although one of my um, links in our weekly lecture also will show an HLOOKUP. In fact, I'll have a neat video that shows you the difference between the two of them. But I'm going to do the VLOOKUP. So what I want to do is the amount here is going to be this amount times the commission. But we have to figure out what the commission is going to be because this amount actually falls between 50,000 and 70,000. And so it's uh, either going to be 10% or 15% of, of a commission and then multiplied by, by this. So how are we going to... Uh, is this person going to get a 10% commission or they can get a 15% commission? Now we're looking at a table with five people in it. So we can already tell right away that everyone in here is over 30,000. So they're all going to get at least a 5% commission. This person's pro and this person are going to get a 10% commission. And um, actually this one's going to get a 15%. So is this one, but imagine this table having, Oh, I don't know, 70 or 80 people in it. That's why you would use something like this. So it's going to be kind of interesting. It's using a VLOOKUP, and what I'm saying is that I want to look something up. I want to look up this number, compare it to over here, then plug in this commission and multiply this commission by this cell. <laughs> it's like, what? So let's actually build it as a function. We're going to do a VLOOKUP. And this is going to say lookup value. I want to look this up. Table array. So what we're doing is we're looking up a table array. And I didn't actually name this a specific array. I could, but right now I'm going to go in and I'm just looking up the numbers. I don't need to know the word sales or commission or commission table. Oops. See, now this is what happens when I'm not paying attention. I want to look this up, click in the table array, select the table array. Then the column index number has to do with which column in the table array I'm looking at. So say I was looking at a table array of four columns and the commission was in the third column, then I would put the number three. Well, this is a two column table, so I'm going to be looking it up in the second column, which would be here. I did a range lookup I'm not worrying about because it's uh, uh, optional, it's not bold. So I'm gonna hit okay. Ah, geez, I love it when I do this. I do the formula in the wrong place. Ah, that didn't work either because this was looking for this number. And when I move down here and try to copy it in, then it's trying to look for a number that would be over here. <laughs> LG just has loads of fun. So I'm just going to grab this. Uh, no, no, I'm going to do it the right way. So this is one thing. You just got to be really careful what you're working on. So V look up. Again, I don't mind making mistakes and showing them to you. So once again, going to look this up, click in here, select my table array of the data I want. Then I want to put the second column in here. Then I'm going to hit enter. Well, the commission would be, oh my God, a whole 10 cents. What did I do wrong? Well, the goal is, is I want to apply this 10% commission to this. So I get the real commission. So what I'm going to be doing is actually multiplying the contents of this by the response to this lookup, and there's my commission. Now, the one thing is here, I'm going to have to look at um, what happens if I copy this down. It's going to get really weird because this is not going to be looking at the same cell ranges up here because I didn't do, guess what? I didn't make this absolute. In order to make sure that every time I move down this column, it's still looking at exactly these cells, even though it's looking at the total that's right next to it to the left. So I need to make sure to come up here, hit that F4, 
and then there's the same formula, or same results rather, but I do this and I'll get um, the, the proper amount. And then I'm going to bring this down. And there we go. So this is the commission that these folks are going to get. Kind of cool, huh? So now the third thing I want, and the thing is it would have been better if I had just gone in here and I had named this a range. So say I'm going to go here and type. I could do that. And then in this formula, instead of having this typed out, I could just type commission. And then same thing. So, you know, you want to do things as easily as possible. Now, one of the problems you'll have is sometimes you'll be having something that you want to look up in the table. Say my totals were here and then something else was, um, or excuse me, say I wanted to fill in some information here and the information I wanted to look up was to the right of it. The VLOOKUP is notorious for not working if it's not looking something up to its left. So say I actually had something here and I wanted to fill in like somebody's name based on something over here. So this would be what would be the formula would be in and be filled in. It wouldn't work right because the VLOOKUP is limited that way. That Next thing we're going to look at is since the VLOOKUP function usually only looks to the left, we want to take a look at something a little bit more interesting. So um, here what we've got is a table of sales reps and of months, their commissions, but all the money that they've made in here. And what I've got over here is a little table that if I were to type in Joe Johnson's name here and then the name of the month here, I want to find out what that person made. Now, I'm not going to put in total or commission, so I'm really only interested in looking up this array in this table. So what I need to do is index um, looking this up, and then I need to be able to match it to some information that um, is in here and in here based on the fact that I'll be typing some information from in here and typing some information from in here to activate the final working formula. Oh my goodness, that sounds interesting, doesn't it? Now this gets a little bit complex, so bear with me as we go through it. Because ideally what you've got here is I'm going to be looking in B40 through I44. Now, the thing is, I actually don't want to look in this whole array because I don't care about the totals or the commissions. So I actually probably just going to be looking in um, B40 through G44 because I just want to know for the first six months here. But if I'm looking at that, so let's say that would be through um, G. Then what I want to do is I want to match the contents of the cell K40 with information in this row. And then I want to match the information um, or, uh, th that I type in here with these six months. So that is some really interesting stuff I have to look up. Now you can see all of this work that I did in here to basically do absolute references. But instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make some name ranges here to make my life a little easier. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this and I'm going to just type Jan June. That says Jane June should be Jean. Jan Jan June. There we go. Well, I guess it wants to have. And let's see if I can. I can't delete one of them, but I'm just have to remember it's Jan June. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just call this this rep. And then finally I'm going to do this and call it months. Now, ideally, if I'm going to be doing this index function, what I'm doing is I'm looking for some information and then I'm looking for more information. The problem is, is I'm looking for two pieces of information and this gets to be really a, a bit of a mess. And I actually built this based on looking at a several different videos and some work I've done in the past. So what I want to do is I want to modify this dummy formula up here. And so instead of having this be B40 through G44, I want this to be look up Jan, June. And then I want to match the cell K40 with the range of rep. And then um, I want to match this cell, L, um, 
L39 um, with months. And note that I actually have this being uh, absolute, but I forgot to make this one absolute. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make sure. And since I'm doing this inside of an uh, inactive formula, because I wanted to see if I got my stuff working before I go in um, and, and try to make it live. So I'm going to make sure to put my um, exclamation points here. And I see my question marks here. So what's going to happen here is we're going to look in this range of numbers. And then with that, we're going to match for this cell the reps. And if the rep is not listed, then it'll be nothing. And then we're also going to be trying to match what's typed in here with these months or that'll be nothing. So let's see what happens when I try to make this work. Copy this, cross my fingers, and then we'll try to see if we can figure out the problems. So it says NA value, not a value. Oh, and why is this happening? Not applicable. Well, that is because there's actually nothing in here that's really useful to look up. So what I want to do is I'm going to type Joe Johnson so I can see if the formula works at all. Then I'm going to type in Mar. Oh, it worked. So, <laughs> so basically what happened is the reason I got that NA is because I hadn't finished doing the work here. So again, thinking I'm looking at, say, five pages of names, and I were to say scroll down and somewhere in the middle, I'm looking up Tim Duncan. So I could come over here and I could do uh, type in Tim Duncan. And then I could say, but I want to actually see Tim Duncan for May because he was on vacation in May. Oh, he still did pretty well while he's in vacation in May. So that's a little bit about how that works. Now, the video that I have on our site over here um, for this is a really good one. Where is it? This one. So you definitely want to take a look at this for index match lookups as well. So on that note, I think I've covered more than enough formulas to make your heads want to explode all over again. Um, I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you have a great time working with these. Again, don't stress about formulas. Just kind of try to figure out the logic of how stuff works. And um, definitely this week, go through every one of the um, projects that are part of your textbook um, range of reading and stuff. Um, and uh, with that, thank you very much and have a great day.